Welcome in, listener. You're listening to a segment from the Slump Buster podcast with Juju and Dre. Find the full episode on Spotify, iTunes, the Google Play Store, or our YouTube channel. Enjoy. A discussion that's got a lot of buzz and is very popular amongst our viewers has been the controversy surrounding the Houston Astros, or someone called them the Scrooston Astros. Because, yeah, as we mentioned a few weeks ago, so the revelation of this cheating scandal that involved a center field camera being used to peer on and on posing pitchers and catchers' signs and was doubled down on by a trash can being in the locker room that they were able to basically beat one for fastball, two for changeup. Three for curveball, stuff like that. Basically, it was the revelation that came to be. Now, there hasn't been a lot of news other than Rob Manfred has kind of like chimed in a little bit as far as the scandal goes. So it's not a lone incident. There has been a constant rush of technology versus baseball when it comes to teams just trying to get ahead of the game, get ahead of this gamesmanship aspect, which we talked about. Was it gamesmanship? Was it cheating? Well, now we're talking about full-on cyber warfare going on at the MLB if, if we're still talking about gamesmanship versus like cheating when it comes to this, because it's cheating. <laughs> Let's just be frank about it. Absolutely. Like, and there's some things that are sort of gray area, right? Like if you're watching an open practice that another team is having, well, it's an open practice, right? And they're doing it out in the public. Is that really cheating? I don't know. But this is blatant cheating, like recording signs and then letting you know during the game what's going to happen, right? Like that's blatant cheating. Mm -hmm. As far as like this goes, so apparently baseball's been dealing with this before. So there was kind of some buzz surrounding teams using technology to get ahead out there in the foreground prior to this announcement coming out or this revelation coming out. The Red Sox from their championship year apparently got some fines just because of players wearing eye watches during the game, which does leave the door open for potential sign stealing. I don't know if anything was necessarily connected with that, but Manfred suggested in 2017, he actually told teams that they could lose draft picks, they could get fined if this was to continue. And Manfred's statements on it was along this line. I take myself seriously. Seriously, I do. I think that when technology-aided sign stealing began to bubble up during the 2017 season, I look backward and how the issue has been dealt with. I wrote when I wrote because I did not believe that the discipline that had been handed out in the past were in line with the significance of the issue that we were dealing with. So I do view the public statement as a line of demarcation. Clubs were on notice. However, the commissioner's office has dealt with these issues historically going forward. I view them with a particular level of seriousness. Now that leaves the door open for, and we talked about it on this show, could the Astros owner lose his team? Could players get suspended? Could the coaches get suspended? What would be appropriate punishment for this Astros team? Ah, man. I mean, and it's hard because it's never been this blatant of cheating in such a big environment, right? Like, I guess you could almost compare like the Russian scandal with them, you know, basically being juiced going into the Olympics. But even that, that's across multiple sports. The Olympics is mm-hmm. not like, you know, the crown jewel of one sport, right? Like it's not the World Series, you know, a particular sport. And I mean, I think it would be completely fair to say, look, these coaches are going to be banned and suspended from the league for a year, maybe indefinitely. Indefinitely would be a little bit strong, right? Because that might mean mm-hmm. that they're going to permanently be out. But like, I would say the coaches need to be gone. I could see serious fines coming down. I don't think that they would force the owner to sell the team, but I can see that maybe being something. I don't think it'll go that way. I think it'd be a, a fine instead. But then, like, do you put an asterisk next to that World Series, right? Or do you give it back to the Dodgers? Like we were talking about, you know, all those mm-hmm. LA fans, I'm sure, are extremely pissed about this. Yeah, you do that. And I don't think even the Dodgers would accept that trophy if we're being honest I don't think about so either. it. Now, like no team wants like a pity trophy just based off it, because at the end of the day, you still do have to hit the ball. That's one thing I will kind of say in the Astros defense. Like even Mm -hmm. if you told me a fastball was coming, I couldn't hit it. I couldn't even get close to a major league fastball if I knew it was coming right down the middle. But I'm also not at these guys hand eye coordination level. Jose Altuve, you tell him that our oldest Chapman is throwing him 105 mile per hour fastball down the pipe, he's going to crush it. And hey, we saw that in game six. I mean, we've all seen that like face of our oldest Chapman after that home run into the Crawford boxes that just Mm -hmm. painful. Like, how did that guy know that was coming? Or how did he like time that so perfectly? And now we just look at that with that little question mark now, because we just assumed, hey, Jose Altuve is a 
good hitter. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He's a little guy, but he has a lot of pop. He's a scrappy attitude. And yeah, he could touch 105 mile per hour fastball. But just to hit it with that level of conviction, especially knowing what we know now, definitely puts a little bit of a black stain on this. Mm -hmm. And I kind of mentioned it here when I was setting this up. So Baseball is just in this fight against time and technology right now. So baseball has always had the struggle of being one of those sports that struggles to catch up with the speed of society, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a beautiful part of the game that even as society changes, it does kind of like stay the same. It does stay consistent. I mean, when we talked about the Fill the Dreams review we did a few weeks ago, I constantly look at what James Earl Jones said is baseball has been that one constant in America's like scenery for years. But at the same time, so we're talking about at the end of the day, a camera, a good camera, Camera, but a camera, mm -hmm. which cameras have been around for hundreds of years, and a trash can. That was used as the technology of choice in this matter. And that was good enough to potentially help the Astros win a World Series. Now, when we're talking about the iWatches, or there's even been studies as far as like band-aids that could vibrate on command. You're telling me a player can't really slip that underneath their wristbands and just bzz, fastball, bzz, mm -hmm. curveball. You know, that's a little bit gray area. So is it just like each team is just going to have to hire their own like tech department, their own IT department to be able to fight each other? Are right, we talking about just like full on like, you know, how countries always try and like out cyber fight each other, you know, under this radar? Is that yeah. what baseball teams are going to have to do now? They're going to be launching ridiculous. their own satellites into space so that they yeah. can spy on <laughs> other teams. Which just sounds so ridiculous, but at this rate, you could say it's possible. And certainly, I do think that baseball, compared to the other sports, does leave the door open more for the possibilities of these things to happen. Because, I mean, I just don't really know how much you could really cheat in a basketball game, comparably. Mm -hmm. Football, I mean, I do think that, that football does have the ability to. Like, if you told the opposing team what play another team's going to be able to run, I do think that puts you at an even more advantage than knowing what a posing pitch is going to be mm -hmm. but again we haven't seen the practical use of it at, when we talked about like so just in, where does this rank in terms of sports scandals spygate really wasn't that big a deal i i know a lot of people will say it was it really wasn't because all the patriots really did was film a jets practice mm -hmm. which sounds terrible but they filmed that practice during the preseason what relevance it would have had to their legit game plan against the patriots we'll never know but it couldn't have came up as much as it did in the game moment like when we talked about the tapping of the trash cans and etc mm -hmm. yeah no i think this is a totally new level of cheating right this goes into actual implementation of cheating and bill belichick as much as i think he's a cheater and you know deflating footballs and all of that stuff at the end of the day a deflated football like you said that the team still has to show up and still play whereas when you're tapping the tr trash can yeah same thing you still have to actually hit the ball but at the same time like this is constantly being implemented you know and being used to give your team the advantage throughout the, the entire series and so i think it's personally the biggest sports scandal at least down at this level like i said there's the russians mm -hmm. taking steroids in the olympics and all that stuff that's big but we sort of expect it with russia but <laughs> when it comes to american well, sports this is what this is what i i think is the biggest make that another country we can never be played in <laughs> I just say <laughs> no, the I'm... Russians, if you, so on a side note, there's this movie called Icarus. If you haven't seen it, it's a documentary about how the Russians cheated and uh -huh. they were using, you know, steroids, basically state sponsored steroids. Yeah. That tells you how bad cheating is over there. Okay. I, I will concede that I do think that that is a huge sports scandal in terms of historic rank with this, but I, I think you just got to compare that to the time we were in at that mm -hmm. moment, the Russians versus the U S the Soviets versus the U S when it came to, um, you know, trying to get ahead specifically in the Olympic events, our two nations, you know, mm -hmm. that was one of the most competitive rivalries of all time. Not because the Olympics meant so much more than the Olympics at that time. Mm -hmm. This is just purely sport when it comes yep. to the Astros. Two teams going at each other, and another one is just gaining a competitive advantage that the other team did not have access to. I guess you could argue, technically, if the Dodgers had a camera in center field as well, would we really care that much? Like, if both teams we knew were doing the same thing, maybe? But the fact of the matter is, baseball is just going to have to do something here to where this never happens again. And it sounds like Rob Manfred is prepared to do that. Yeah. So what do you think, going back to the question you asked me, what do you think is going to be the punishment? I think the owners are going to lose their team. <laughs> you think so? You think it's going to be that drastic? I think because you got to look at the major like baseball scandals historically. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned the 1919 Chicago Black Sox. 
We mentioned the PED scandal. Those both went to the steps of Congress. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the MLB really wants to go back to the steps of Washington, D.C. when they have a just simple solution ownership? That team is no longer yours. I mean, it's going to be controversial because you were also talking about the other people involved here. So when we talk about like the GMs, um, the coaches, because we have to just assume everyone in the organization was in on it. You do have to consider, are these guys going to get banned for life? I think that would be excessive. I think it would especially be unfair. So like, for example, you do have Carlos Beltran was apparently reportedly at the forefront of this plan, the strategy. Mm -hmm. So he was a player at the time. Now he's a manager. Do you punish the New York Mets now? Yeah. To spend their manager who is now a manager, not a player? I mean, you could argue they kind of did the same with Pete Rose. So they're punishing his playing career as a Hall of Fame player by what he did as a manager later in his life by betting on the games. So I guess that would be a comparable. But if I have to make a definitive statement, take away the ownership, at least suspend the GM and AJ Hinch, the manager. Mm -hmm. And then if there was any players that had legitimate knowledge of this situation. Well, I mean, obviously you have to assume all the star players did because, I mean, clearly they were benefiting from it on the field. Mm -hmm. You have to suspend them comparable to where you would probably a baseline PED suspension, which was 90 games. Mm -hmm. I think that might be the way to go. Yeah, I think it's definitely a possibility, right? I don't know if they'll go as far as, as taking the team away, and that's what I said. I'll stick with that. But that does make it a very clear statement that this will not be tolerated anymore. And I don't think any franchise from that point forward is willing to take that risk right yeah um, i can possibly lose my team okay it's not worth winning a world series over that and i didn't even mention too i think you're also going to find them millions upon millions of dollars as mm -hmm. well as taking away draft picks because if there's anything that's going to cripple an organization more it's taken away from their farm system mm -hmm. taking away from their international spending budget so they can't even get foreign players mm -hmm. and taking away their money they already have because i think i've heard the number that essentially if you win the world series that's like a 90 million dollar pay boost in revenue i don't know if you could find them 90 million dollars i think that would be excessive but i would take a good chunk of that mm -hmm. and you're talking about a billionaire owner here too it's not like this guy would be strapped for cash if he lost that amount of money but I do think that it would send a clear and direct statement. And he'll probably counter sue the league, I'm sure. And that would eventually go to court. But I think it would be at least baseball taking the initiative and the action to say, again, like you mentioned, this will not be tolerated. We will not let a scandal like this come into the league again. And if you do this, your fine won't actually be the fine that we just gave the Astros. Your punishment won't be equivalent to that. It will be worse. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's good that Manfred's getting ahead of it and saying like, hey, we, we realize that this is a major issue. We are going to do something that's, you know, never been done before when it comes to dishing out punishment. And I think it's 100% absolutely called for.